गुड आफ्टरनून स्टूडेंट्स टूडेज लेक्चर इज ऑन एक्टिव साइकिल ऑफ ब्रीडिंग टेक्निक बेसिकली इन योर सेकेंड ईयर फाइनेंशियोथेरापी सब्जेक्ट यू हैव दिस टॉपिक ऑफ एक्टिव साइकिल ऑफ ब्रीडिंग टेक्निक विच इज एप्लीकेबल फॉर थर्ड ईयर एज वेल एज फॉर फाइनल ईयर पी पी टी एच सो मेनली यू लाइक टू नो वॉट इज एक्टिव साइकिल ऑफ ब्रीडिंग टेक्निक फर्स्ट बिकॉज सिंस इट्स अ न्यूअर टेक्निक फॉर यू पीपल इट वॉज नॉट देयर इन फर्स्ट ईयर सो इट इज देयर इन सेकेंड ईयर एज वेल एज इन थर्ड एज वेल एज फाइनल ईयर so let us know what is active cycle of breeding technique now what will be the objectives of my today's topic what do you mean by acbt that is active cycle of breeding technique what are the different phases in which how this active cycle of breeding technique takes place or how it is applied and what is the application of this acbt how it is being used or how it should be applied on any patient and use of acbt in whichever type of patients we are using so all that we also will be talking about and we will be talking at the end about the indications and contraindications of acbt so these are some of the objectives of our today's talk now let us try to understand what is acbt by the definition the active cycle of breeding technique is used to mobilize and clear the secretions which are present in the lungs or in the lung fluids now basically you may be wondering why there will be secretions which will be present in the lungs now if you go to any hospital or in the icu or in the ward you can see there are some patients who are bedridden some patients who are not moving here and there or some patients they are on mechanical ventilator some patients on on the ipd wards so those patients they will be because of immobilization they will be having secretions which will be present in the lung fields so most of the time what happens because of this secretions the patient will be having difficulty in breathing and due to that there will be reduced oxygenation in the lung fields so in order to maintain or to increase the lung fields or oxygen saturation we have to make sure that this excess amount of bronchial secretion should be removed so majority of the time conventionally what the physicians or the doctors they do is they will tell the nurses to go for nebulization but after doing nebulization which is also helping to loosening the secretions the nebulization the effect of nebulization is to loosen the secretions to liquefy the secretions but once it is liquefied then it will go in the periphery once it goes in the periphery how to make it come from periphery to the proximal that is to the upper end of the lung fluids so in order to do that we need to mobilize the secretions so by way of this active cycle of breathing technique these secretions can be very well be removed or very well can be mobilized now let me tell you one another example of this acbt can be postural drainage which is also there in the syllabus in postural drainage basically we are using a tilt table a plinth which can be adjusted as per the degrees if you want to have 14 degrees elevation or 18 degrees elevation so based on that the postural drainage technique can also be useful or it can be also applied but here in this active cycle of breathing technique here the person will be made to sit in erect position high sitting erect position so based on this it can also be used at the hospital level and at the same time at the home setup also it is applicable in both the ways as well as in the hospital setup and at the home level so next moving on to it has been shown to be effective in clearance of bronchial secretions and to improve the lung functions so as i told you if secretions are present more in the lungs so what will happen there will be less oxygenation oxygenation will be reduced so due to that you can see the oxygen level also will be keep on reducing and the patient may be requiring oxygen therapy so in order to prevent that the assistive form of oxygen therapy what we do is we clear the lung fluids or clear the secretions so by way of using active cycle of breathing technique now next moving to next point it's a flexible method of treatment which can be adapted for use in any patient young or old or any medical or surgical conditions now let me tell you this is not only applicable only to some restrictive group of patients or restrictive group of conditions it can be applicable for a patient who is on a long term basis like for example let me tell you copd chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or some asthmatic patients or some bronchial asthma patients bronchiectasis 
these are some of the long term disease patients who will be having on and off secretions accumulation of secretions it could be due to diurnal variations sometimes in the winter season sometimes in the rainy seasons they will have infection so because of that infection there will be on and off accumulation of secretions so it can be applied even in patients who are having on long term disease or long term drugs now next moving on to it can be used with or without an assistance see one very important point about this particular uh, topic is active cycle breathing first we should try to understand active means here the patient is actively involved and it's a cycle means there are some repetitions there are some different phases which i am coming to it in my next slide so here they will be doing actively and in a different phases with a different frequency and a duration so here it can be carried out without with assistance or without assistance it is vice versa he can do independently by himself or else he can do by a need of an assistance so this is what is about the next slide now next moving on to the phases these are the different three phases in which active cycle of breathing technique is conducted number one coming to breathing control now normally what will happen whenever any patient whenever any patient who comes to hospital setup you can see that that patient is stressed up he is having that fear he is having somewhere that okay i am come to hospital so he will not be relaxed so for that we need to make him relax so that is one of the principle of this acpt is any patient who visits to your opd who visits to your hospital make sure that he is comfortable he is relaxed he is not intense he is not stressed out. so i will come to breathing control what is breathing control next is thoracic expansion exercises now thoracic expansion exercises means here since our lungs it has got two kind of different segments that is right and left left lung so in right lung there are again three segments the left lung again there are two segments upper lobe middle lobe and lower lobe so again this upper lobe lower lobe and middle lobe they are divided into different segments so if suppose let me tell you the example in the upper lobe you have got apical segment you have got anterior segment and posterior segment so wherever the secretions are based on that this thoracic expansion exercises has to be applied means it will be applicable not necessary that if a person is if a patient is having secretions in one particular segment of the lung and you are giving this acpt for throughout the lung segment that is also not correct so you can emphasize on a particular segment on a particular lobe in this particular technique and next is force expiratory technique or force expiration technique now what is this force expiration technique that also i will be talking in detail about it in the next slides now next first coming to breathing control what is breathing control as i told you breathing control means it's a normal tidal breathing unit or it's a normal control of tidal breathing using the lower chest with relaxation of upper chest and shoulder now let me demonstrate you if suppose i want to demonstrate you how the breathing control in this format if it is to be carried out then what i will be doing is normally without raising my shoulder see this i am raising my shoulder without raising the shoulder i will be taking deep inspiration followed by expansion of my abdomen this is what is the normal relaxed breathing control okay one second i'll just show you what i'll do is i will take deep inspiration at the same time my abdomen will be bulging out but make sure that my shoulders they are not getting elevated that is not correct so in order to do that it should be relaxed <coughs> the upper chest and the shoulders should be relaxed only your abdomen should be bulging out that is what is the number one number two this used to be known as diaphragmatic breathing now as you all know we usually do diaphragmatic breathing exercises as one of the main chief inspiratory muscle as you know diaphragmatic is the diaphragm is the main muscle of inspiration it's the main muscle of inspiration so for that we are emphasizing more on the diaphragmatic breathing so in that diaphragmatic breathing also we will keep the hand just below the sphincter sternum over the dome of the diaphragm and tell the patient to breathe out as much as he can okay then next moving on to teach breathing control the patient should be in comfortable well supported position either in the sitting or the high sitting position now here the main intention of telling this particular point is 
this ACBT, it should not be carried out in supine line, nor in prone line, nor in supine line. It has to be carried out either in high sitting position or in semi forward position. In semi forward position, why? Because there the diaphragm will be relaxed. If you make a patient to lie in 45 degrees angle in semi forward position, you have to keep two pillows below the knee joint, both the knee joints, and make sure that patient is in 45 degrees angle, which is the best position for comfort of a patient and where the diaphragm also will be relaxed. So that is what is semi forward position. So either way it can be used in semi forward position or it can be used in high sitting position. This is also number one criteria of breathing control. Number three, the patient is encouraged to relax his upper chest, shoulders and arm while using the lower chest. Like he has to be given certain instructions before using this particular ACBT is his shoulders it should not be elevated number one and he should not elevate at the same time he should not raise the upper chest he should only do the movement of the abdomen that's the diaphragm okay there has to be inward and outward movement of the diaphragm that is what is being given instruction in breathing control so i hope uh, you have understood about breathing control everyone now next moving on to thoracic expansion now this is a very important point here thoracic expansion now in thoracic expansion if you if you see the read the term thoracic expansion here there is expansion of the thorax in thoracic expansion there is expansion of the thorax so this expansion we are making it as a voluntary okay normally if you don't give instruction to your patient he may not do expansion of the thorax but here the second phase of ACBT is thoracic expansion which is very important here. Now why this thoracic expansion is very important here because whatever expansion you are doing based on that the secretion will get accumulated okay somewhere in the central of the lung and those secretions from periphery it can be brought back to proximal and it can be very easily evacuated by way of coupling or coughing. So here in thoracic expansion if you see we usually do chest manipulations also. I hope you know something about chest manipulation such as shaking, vibration and clapping. These are the three techniques in which chest manipulation is being carried out. So in that, in this thoracic expansion, if suppose there is some secretions which are present in the right lung. Now you want to drain it from the right lung to the central lung, that is to the trachea. So that thing can be possible in the thoracic expansion exercise. So what it is? Inspiration is active and may be combined with a 3 second hold before the passive relaxation. Now let me tell you, I think you have, might have learned in your physiology that inspiration is active process whereas expiration is a passive process. Right? We all do actively inspiration but when we do ex expiration, exhalation, that is a passive process. So here it has to be carried out with a 3 second hold. Why 3 second hold? Because whatever the expansion of the chest takes place so that it reach all the segments, all the peripheral segments of the lung trees. So that the secretions can be very easily moved from periphery to the proximal end. Now the third point, the post-operative maneuver of a 3 second hold at full inspiration has been said to decrease collapse of the lung tissue. Now what do you mean by collapse? This is also something very new terminology for you all. Collapse means you might have heard something is getting collapsed, buildings are getting collapsed. So similarly, if there is no air which is going in the lung fields, so that lung will be called as collapsed. Collapsed means there is no coiling and recoiling, there is no expansion of the lung, there is no air which is going inside the lung or there is no air which is coming out of the lung. That is what is known as collapse. So basically, in case of post-operative maneuver, we do it with a three-second hold in inspiration to prevent the collapse of the lung. Now, next, moving on to very important aspect of this ACBT is forced expiratory technique or forced expiration technique. Now, as you as you know, we have discussed first one breathing control. Now in breathing control basically we made our patient to be comfortable 
we made our patient to be completely relaxed if he is tense, if he is stressed. But in the second phase, what we did is we tried to accumulate the secretions wherever the secretions are present in the lower lobe, in the middle lobe, or in the upper lobe, wherever. So we made it to come at one phase of centrally located trachea. Now, in the third phase, that is the force expiration technique. Now, what do you understand by force? Force means somehow we are making the secretions to come out by way of some techniques. Now, to give you an example, good example for you, whenever any foreign particle goes in your mouth, immediately there will be a cough reflex. We usually cough, right? So, something like that, there is two aspects. One is huffing and another one is coughing. So, huffing means it is usually with the partially open glottis. Now, let me demonstrate you what is huffing in this lecture itself. If, suppose I am doing like this, this is known as huff. Because here, the glottis is partially open, it is not completely closed. But if you see coughing, it will be like this. <coughs> so in coughing, there are four mechanisms which are taking place. Deep inspiration, closure of glottis, increased intra-abdominal and intra pressure, and forceful expulsion. This is all the four mechanisms which is taking place in coughing. But here, we want only cough because we don't want to put more pressure. Now basically, if you see this cuffing, it's contraindicated in post-surgical patients. Like for example, any open heart surgery patient who have recently underwent a surgery of open heart surgery. So in those patients, cuffing is contraindicated. Why? Because there could be chances of break in the sutures or breakdown in the sutures. But whereas huffing, which is not having that much pressure, which will build up on the suture side. So it is more advisable. So here also, in forced expiration technique, we are using only huffing. Don't mention coughing. Then, the huffing, it will be from low lung level. Low lung volume will move the periphery situation, secretions, and, and a huff from a high lung volume. Now let me tell you more in detail about this. In our lungs, we have got three levels. Low lung level, mid level, and high level. So low lung level means we are creating some pressure within the lungs so that somewhere it will come to mid lung and from mid lung we have to take it to high lung. So these are the three different phases in which your huffing is being carried out. So that is how this is, it is been taken from distal to proximal, that is from periphery to the proximal. So this is all about your post expiration technique. So I hope all the students they are understanding about this thing. Now if you see, this is one cycle of how ACVT is being conducted. So ACVT is conducted in this pattern or this phases. Now as I told you, there are three phases, breathing control. The number one is breathing control. So after breathing control, there has to be three to four thoracic expansion. This is how the cycle is all over. As I told you, active cycle of breathing technique. So this is how the cycle is. So this cycle, it will take minimum 20 minutes, minimum, and maximum 30 minutes to conduct a particular session of ACBT on a patient. So after breathing control, you have to do three to four thoracic expansion exercises. So in this three to four thoracic expansion, there will be three seconds of hold, chest clapping, chest shaking or vibration. As I told you previously, there is something called chest manipulation where we have got vibration, shaking and clapping. So this is all we have to do these three sessions in three to four thoracic expansion. So after the second cycle, then once again you have to make your patient to go for breathing control. Now why again and again there is a breathing control? You may be wondering why there is a breathing control here. Sorry for interruption, there are some arrow marks which I wanted to delete, but let it be. So again in breathing control, it's again getting repeated here, second time. Because after doing this 3 to 4 thoracic expansion, a patient may be exhausted. He may become exhausted. So in order to prevent that exhaustion or exertion, we have to make him to come back to normal, that is breathing control. And after breathing control, once again 3 to 4, 
thoracic expansion exercises in which there will be a three second hold, chest clapping, chest shaking and vibration. So all this will be again once again repeated in the fourth time. Then again fifth time, once again it will be a breathing control. There will be a breathing control and the end you have to see that there will be a force expiration technique. As I told you, the last phase is force expiration technique. So what we are doing in the first phase, we are doing breathing control. Then we are trying to loosen the secretion by way of 3 to 4 thoracic expansion in which 3 seconds of hold, chest clapping, shaking, vibration. Then secondly, breathing control. Once again repeatedly, we are doing 3 to 4 thoracic expansion and followed by breathing control. And then at the end, we are doing force expiration technique. So in force expiration technique, it is one or two hops combined with breathing control. In the last phase, where the secretions will be removed out, means it will be expelled out. So that is how in the cycle which takes place. Now see in this also, in this image also you can see that this is how the breathing control is followed by deep breathing, then breathing control, then there will be a small long hop, then there will be a big short hop. Okay? This is how the hopping and the breathing control phase is being carried. And another one image in which they are telling that it is 20 to 30 second holds in breathing control. Means in short, if you want to carry out this ACBT technique, it should be at about 20 minutes minimum. So in 20 minutes, there will be 20 to 30 seconds of breathing control, 3 to 4 deep breaths, breathing control once again, and 3 to 4 deep breaths followed by breathing control and huffing at the end. So this is how the cycle will continue. Now coming back to application of ACBT. Now application means why it is applied, in which conditions it is applied, and what for we have to apply. Okay. Now, as I told you, not necessary for all hospitalized patients ACBT should be conducted. Even at the home level, when a patient is having long term disease, there also it can be applied by way of using application of ACBT. Now, in application, if you see the cycle of breathing control, thoracic expansion exercises, and the force expiration technique is adapted for various phases. As I told you, this is again the same phases where we are conducting the different cycles of breathing control. Now next moving on to indications. Now in indications, if you see in ACBT, mainly it is indicated for n number of patients. Like it can be indicated for respiratory conditions, it can be indicated for cardiac conditions, or it can be indicated in some of the cardiac rehabilitation, pulmonary rehabilitation. So wherever patient is having accumulation of secretions or having difficulty in breathing or having dyspnea, that is breathlessness. Dyspnea means it is known as breathlessness. So in all those patients category, we will be applying ACBD. So let's talk about what is COPD. Now COPD means it is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease means in this you will have bronchial asthma, you will have emphysema, you will have bronchiectasis and at the end you will have uh, chronic bronchitis. These are the four conditions under COPD which usually comes. So in this particular condition that is COPD, more and off it will be like every alternate few months patient will be having infection, patient will be having uh, cough with secretions, accumulation of secretions, having difficulty in breathing. So in this category of patients, usually it is very much indicated. And in some very elderly patients, geriatric group patients or newborn, infants or children who are very often getting infected due to the ambience, they also can be taught with ACBT techniques. So it can be indicated in COPD as well as in those patients who are having accumulation of secretions to mobilize the secretions and to remove the secretions very easily without any mechanical device or without doing suctioning or without doing anything this particular technique can be found to be very useful. Now next indication is pneumonia. Now pneumonia means this is again a new terminology for you people. It's an inflammation of the lung tissue. 
pneumonias. So inflammation of lung tissue means it can be a hospital acquired pneumonia, a patient who comes with some disease and he get infected with some hospital acquired pneumonia. That is one of the conditions very commonly we come across in the hospital setup. So in those conditions also you can see the lungs are completely consolidated. They are having secretions all over the lung veins, scattered all over the lung segments. So in those conditions also ACVP is found to be very effective. And the third one is ARDS. ARDS means Adult Respiratory Distress Syndrome. This is also one of the conditions where usually a patient is on oxygen support or he is on mechanical ventilator, he is on some form of artificial ventilation. So there again the patient will be having ARDS. So that also is one of the indicated patients who can be applied with ACVD. And the last one is a restrictive lung disease. Now the restrictive lung disease means where there is problem with expansion or the coiling and recoiling of the lung fields. That is what is restrictive lung disease. So here again, what will be happening is the PFT values or the oxygenation will be reduced or will be less than the normal. So because since they don't have enough amount of oxygenation, so there it becomes mandatory that to remove the secretions as early as possible to prevent the infection. Now what will be the contraindications? The contraindication means as it is if you see ACVT, it's not contraindicated as such, but here one condition is the patient has to be conscious, he should be oriented to time, place and person. Whenever you are giving actively, see as it is the name itself says that active circular breathing technique. Active circular breathing technique means a patient has to be actively involved in doing this particular technique. So that's why in an unconscious patient, it is highly impossible that to apply this particular technique. So it is contraindicated again there. And secondly, in unstable parameters. Unstable parameter means, let me give you one good example. If a patient is having fluctuation in his BP or fluctuation is in ECG or heart rate, it is he's not maintaining the normal values. The values are fluctuating on and off. So in those conditions also, ACBT may increase the critical situation of a patient. This patient may become unstable paramedically. So that's why it should not be applied. And the last one is critically ill patients. Now if a patient who is very ill, who is very elderly patient, who is not able to understand the commands or the responses, or an uncooperative patient, or a patient who is you know, having very much difficulty to understand or do it or to apply it, in those patients also it is not possible to give, so it is contraindicated. Now next coming to the very important aspect of this particular topic that is active cycle of breathing technique is what are the goals and uses. Now for any technique whichever we are applying for any group of patients, for any group of conditions, there has to be some aim and objectives. So based on those aims and objectives, the technique will be applied. Now number one, the first thing will be, as I told you, active cycle of breathing technique is mainly applied for clearing the lung secretions. Okay, the lung secretions. I think you might have come across during COVID situation also, patients were having requirement of oxygenation. There were huge demand of oxygenation. Patients were having um, lots of, lots of months of secretions. So at that level, at that point of time also, ACBT was found to be very effective in clearing the lung fields or clearing the lung secretions. So the first aim or the first goal and use is to clear the lung secretions. Next one, to assist in normal breathing pattern. Now assist in normal breathing pattern means if you, if you have seen any patients who are having breathlessness, we call it in the medical terminology as dyspnea. Dyspnea means a patient who is exhausted and who is not breathing normally. The respiratory rate will be either altered, will be increased. So in that condition, a patient will be having a you know, little bit restlessness. He will not be very much uh, comfortable. So for that reason, the aim will be to assist in normal breathing pattern. So somehow, a breathlessness patient must, must be made to relax, must be made to comfort. The third point, to improve oxygen saturation. This is a very important aspect of this particular ACPT technique is 
we are doing uh, ACPT technique to improve oxygenation. Now, as I told you in my previous lecture, that when you want to improve oxygenation, somehow the lung fields has to be cleared from all the aspects. It should not have secretion, it should not have accumulation of secretions, or it should not have any collapse, or it should not have any alteration in the condition of the patient. So for that reason, to improve the oxygen saturation also, we need to aim for the goals and its uses. Number four, collateral ventilation. Now collateral ventilation means, as you know, the lungs, it is divided into right and left lung. There are two lungs. In the right side, if you see, there are three segments. In the left side, you see two lobes. And right side, three lobes. Again, within that, there are various segments. So if suppose right lung is being affected with secretions or being affected with reduced oxygenation. So what we do is, we try to correlate or we, we try to collateral ventilation. We do by way of collateral ventilation. Somehow the affected lung or the diseased lung also will be improved by way of the normal lung or the healthy lung. Okay, let me narrate you one example. In a case like where the right lung is being affected with reduced air entry or having lots of secretions, but the left lung is the normal lung. So somehow we have to make use of our left lung to somehow assist in the right lung. So that is how it collateral ventilation means, which is otherwise also known as force of con, P-O-R-S, force of con. That means it assists in collateral ventilation. Number fifth, it's a long-term bedridden patients. Now, as I already told you, a patient with a disease or a condition called paraplegia or spinal cord injury patients. They are not patients who get uh, easily recovered in very short spell of time. They will be in the hospital for almost six months, one year, or maybe years. So in that situation, they will be considered as a long-term bedridden patients. So they will be in the hospital for some time, which is a prolonged time. During that time, because of immobility or because of their phase of immobilization, they may be having accumulation of secretions, which is the biggest challenge for the medicine people or the surgery people, the doctors, so that somehow to prevent the patient to go from infection. So that is also one category. And the self-assisted technique for home remedy. As I told you, it's a self-assisted technique for home remedy. At the max, what happens when a patient is admitted in the hospital? So there you can see nurses will be there, residents will be there, physicians will be there, doctors will be there, physiotherapists will be there, all people will be there. So they are taking care of you. But what if a patient gets discharged? If a patient go home, he go home back. So he has to continue with some routine exercises some routine techniques. So for that reason, this particular ACBT is found to be very effective as one of the home remedy. Because in this what happens is, when he is there in the hospital setup, when he has been taught ACBT, or when he has been taught with insect parameter, or breathing exercises, or posture drainage, those things, whether patient will ask, whether I can continue this as a home remedy, so one among them is active cycle of breathing technique. So active cycle of breathing technique means here it's very easy to understand and it doesn't require any equipment. The very interesting part of this ECBT technique is it doesn't require any device, any equipment or any plinth or anything. Like in posture grenade you require a plinth where you have to lie down, where there will be head low position or foot end position raised. But here, in this particular ACBT technique, you just require a nominal chair. A chair with an erect position. Or it can be carried out in your bed also. So, so easy technique and so easily available. And with very only three phases. Very easy and very simple to apply and very easy to understand. So, that is a very important aspect of this particular ACBT technique. The last one is to prevent secondary complications such as pneumonia. As I told you, 
majority of the patients who are admitted in the hospital, they will suffer at the end with a condition called as pneumonia. This is not a good uh, for the patient. Here, if a patient gets diagnosed with pneumonia, then he has to be on a ventilatory support, he has to be on an oxygenation, he needs to take some drugs, he needs to take many, many things in the hospital setting. So, how this can be prevented? This can be very well prevented by way of active cyclotherapy technique, which is very easily applicable and very easy to apply. So, I think with this, I would like to conclude my lecture. So, that's all about my active cycle of breathing technique so far. So, in case if you have not understood, you can approach, you can ask any doubts later on in the clinical setup, in the hospital, I can just demonstrate it. Thank you very much. संपले बंद था क्या? हाँ। ये लगेगा कि यूं दिलवा लेते हैं। यार दोनों में टेक्स्ट राउंड जब अपन केले ले साइलेंट हो। Okay. 